NASDAQ 100 has gotten hammered this week. Apple and Tesla among the biggest drags. Our next guest covers both companies for Wedbush. He's Dan Ives, a star analyst there. He's, he's back with us at Post 9. Um, I fully expect you to show up here and pound the table on Apple and tell me all the reasons why it's great and everybody should buy it. And right now, the market doesn't necessarily care about all those reasons. So why should we? Look, I mean, we've done checks over the last week, and, and we were ready to cut numbers if we thought coming out of the supply chain, you know, we saw that zero COVID really having a massive negative impact. Instead, it's the opposite. I actually think right now, tracking slightly ahead, I think from a demand perspective, what we're seeing on services, what we're seeing on iPhones, much better than expectations. And it comes down to streets baking in. You're going to see numbers cut. We think the opposite. That's why... I know when we look at Apple here, I view it as a table pound, the risk reward, and I think based on checks, further bullish uh, based on this name. I mean, you, you, you come on, and I know you always criticize what you call the haters, right, when people try and come out and, and talk negatively ab about the stock. But the stock does seem to have uh, an issue lately that all of those fundamentals are, are being ignored. Tell me why there's no reason that the stock could go from 137, where it is right now, down to, say, 125. Yeah. Why couldn't it go there if market sentiment remains as uneven, as unsettled as it currently is? Look, I'm not saying that we can't go up, but my, my fundamental issue is the services business. That's the game changer. That's why I believe, ultimately, we look out six, nine months from now, 12, we're going to have a stock with a two in front of it. In other words, I believe services is the key change in Apple. And the other thing, the iPhone demand story, you got 25% that have still not upgraded their iPhone in three and a half years. That's the install-based story. And like we said, right now, many yelling fire in a crowd theater. We did checks ready to cut numbers. Instead, it's actually maybe even slightly better. All right, so let, let's pivot to Tesla, um, a new nine-month low for that stock, which talk about, you know, getting beaten up lately. It's, it's, it's an obvious uh, understatement. Has your view on Tesla changed uh, in any way? There are some who suggest that this is the last of the so-called meme stocks. If you want to put this in that basket uh, that, is roll, that are rolling over right now as we speak. Yeah, well, look, we cut our price target this week from 1400 to 1000 still bullish. You know, in terms of the long-term story in That's Tesla, a big cut. but but it was a cut because look, fundamentally, based on our checks in what we're doing in Asia, in terms of China, I think it's going to be a delivery miss. We want to impact in terms of what that's going to be in the quarter. Still bullish on the longer-term story in Tesla. But let's just be clear: the Twitter circus show, what we've seen coming out of Musk, combined with what we see, especially in the zero COVID in China, can't wear the rose card glasses. We had to cut the price target. And, and that was really where we came out. You've said before that Musk accounts for what? Like this drama accounts for like 100 bucks, something like that. Is that, is that right? I think it's increasing in, in terms of what that overhang's become because of, the, because of the worries that if Tesla stock keeps going down, mm. what that can mean in terms of a margin call. Does he have to ultimately put up more stock? That's why this circus show has basically turned into a Category 5 hurricane. How much of your price target cut was due to concerns you have about China? And then how much le legitimately were due to this ongoing soap opera with Musk. All because Twitter. of China. When, when we actually look at the Musk situation, I still think that, you know, a lot of that started to get baked into the name. But as we see today, it starts to cascade. And at the end of the day, you know, it's been a black eye for Musk. And at a time you need him to navigate the storm, you want to see him on Twitter just focused on Twitter rather than on Tesla in terms of what we see in the supply chain. So playing off of both of these stocks, uh, which have huge weightings in, like, say, the NAS 100, for example, there are some who say that, that one of the worrying signs still in the stock market is that people are still too enamored with tech. These stocks went way up too much. Their valuations increased on Fed liquidity. And a lot of that's coming out of the system now. And until investors break the love affair they have with some of the names like this, the market overall can't get, can't get real. Sure, and, and, and totally get the argument, but I just think when we look at the transformational growth in tech, that's not stopping in terms of cloud cyber security. Obviously, names like Palo Alto we saw last night, names that are holding up. I believe the amount of tech spending over the next four to five years will actually be more than what we've seen over the last 15. So it speaks to my view from a multiple perspective. You don't just throw the towel in on these names because what we're seeing on fundamentals play out, and that's going to be the debate as we saw today uh, front and center. Now, you mentioned.